to you guys about rest. How many of you guys feel like sometimes that you are just tired? You're tired of life, you're tired of stuff, you're tired of folk. That's usually where we get so tired is folk, right? <laughs> we're just tired, we're tired of COVID, and it's like there is nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. There's no break, there's no rest. How many of you ever felt that way? Come on, don't let me glad that we're all know this one. It's just like no relief whatsoever. I remember when all our kids were at home and we had all six of the boys, and, uh, and I remember working 12 hour nights. And I would go to work, work 12 hours, come home, homeschool the kids, and I was a hot mess. Six boys. It was like, then I go to work and I'm dealing with everybody's problems there. I had problems there with them, problems at home. There was never any rest. And I thought, God, what am I doing wrong? I'm just exhausted. How many of you just felt like, I just want to get on the plane and just go, just go in? You ever felt like that? Come on, y'all, wake up and with me tonight, okay? <laughs> who, who can take an answer to that? Amen. Okay. Then just want to just get on the plane and just go. I'm just tired. I'm just, I'm out. You ever felt that way? Mm -hmm. I know you have. <laughs> and I'm just like, God, what am I doing wrong? So I'm going to question myself. Because I know it, has a, it can't be God because God said he brings a rest. So when I was younger, I used to have like, a really bad temper. I mean a really bad temper. But you know what? I knew that I had a short fuse, and I was trying to figure out how can I fix this thing. So do you ever, you ever have an issue with yourself, and you, and you kind of rehearse it in your brain, and you're always trying to figure out how can I fix this about me? What can I do to fix this about me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit tonight, because I was one of those ones. I wanted to fix what was wrong with me. Romans that uh, fifteen twenty five NIV. It says. Now listen, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I know I do not do. But what I hate, I do. How do you feel like that before? It's like, I'm really trying hard to live this Christian life, but then what I want to do, I don't do it. I end up doing what I don't like. How is it that I keep going down the wrong path? Yes? Been there before? Uh-huh. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, in my sinful nature. You hear this? And this is this conversation going on in his head. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do good I want to do. It sounds like a riddle, doesn't it? But the evil I do want to do, this I keep on doing. Oh, so the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I don't want to do, it is no longer I who do it. But it is the sin living in me that does it. <laughs> do you hear the struggle there? I want to do good, but I can't do good. I, want to do, I don't want to do this, but I end up doing that. Do you, you, you hear the struggle here? Surely, you guys can identify with this. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. Then he said, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against me, the law of my mind, of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man am I? Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? So, in other words, he's saying, I'm just doomed. I'm tired of trying. It ain't working. I'm just going just, to just go die in my sin. Thanks be to God. Verse 25. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I want to go back up to this mini, mini scripture up here. Okay? <laughs> I want you to, to, I want to show you something. So y'all want to deal with me for a second? Okay. Look at this. At the beginning, it starts at verse 15. I don't understand what I do for what I want to do. I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I don't want to do, I agree with the law that is good, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in, that is in my sinful nature. Then it goes on again. For I hate the desires to do what is good. I don't have the desires to do good. But I cannot carry it out. I do not 
do good. I want to do, but the evil one I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I don't want to do, hear the eyes. I, I, I. Did you hear the eyes? If you didn't hear the eyes, don't give me a reason to be I. So, but when you get to verse 25, then we get some revelation. Thanks be to God. Yes. Thanks be to God. Say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is the hope right there. All the stuff that you hate to do, that you do, that you can't help but to do, but thanks be to God. He has delivered us so we don't have to act like a fool. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Thanks be to God. Now, let me show you something. First John 2, 1. It says, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate. Who's the advocate? One who fights for us, right? An advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So even though you may say, I screw up and I can't get this figured out, you know what? You have somebody who is with the Father saying, you know what, God? I put something in. I know, I know she screwed up. I know that wrong people can even her better. But I have a better plan for her. I know she's going to be better than this. I know what she's going to be. I know at the end, she's going to be like a diamond in the room. That's the kind of dialogue we serve. We have an advocate with the Father. And listen, the song we sing, he's never lost a battle. He's going to lose, right? So if he says he's going to do it for us, and he says that we are that diamond in the world, then what are we? The diamond in the world. The diamond in the world. The diamond in the world. You know what the problem is? There's one problem. Is it Jesus? No. Who is it? Ah, uh, sir. The I. Get the I out of it because it has nothing to do with you. All you need to do is just keep on being obedient. If you keep on being obedient, guess what? You're going to become everything that God has called you to become. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen. 1 John 1 9. I want you to listen to this. If we confess our sins, this is what he said. So even though we even though we we try to do even though we try to do the right thing, even though we we mess up, but he says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Listen, I know everybody struggles with something, right? Everybody's struggling with something. Everybody's dealing with something that they keep on dealing with, you keep on fighting with, and you keep wondering, okay, I think I got it, and then all of a sudden it comes rearing his ugly head again. And you're still dealing with it over and over and over. If you don't like it about yourself, you know that you want God to change it. But listen, the worst thing you can do is give up. Don't quit. Because I can tell you many, many times when I would hate something about myself, and I would just begin to give to God and give it to God and keep giving to God and keep giving to God. And before you know it, it's just like, whoa, I don't struggle with that anymore. Hmm. I don't struggle with that, that, you know, short temper anymore. Yeah, yeah, I like, I don't like foolishness. But at the same time, I don't want to hurt people in the process, right? So God shows you, he can reveal to you how to handle those situations. Now, listen to this. It says, I'm going to read verse 9 again. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, listen to this. Freedom comes with a price. Ooh, this is where I'm going with this. Now, I want you to really plug in with me again. Freedom comes with a price. When God set you free of something in your life, it comes with a price. And the price is, there's a reason why he set you free. Do you know most people that live this Christian walk will ever really experience freedom? They'll, they'll be saved, but for people to really get into the rest of God, where you feel like, I don't have to really worry about a thing, where you enter into a place of such strong faith that you just know that you know that you know that God's going to deliver you, most Christians never enter into that place. Wow. Right. Now, 
here's what I want you to know. When God set you to set you free and set you in a place where you can trust God with everything in you, there's a reason why He does it. Now, that price that comes with it, here's the price. Now you gotta go get somebody else. You can't just be free because you want to be free. And that's it. No, no, no. Freedom, when you get free, God puts call on your life. A greater call. Now you gotta go have somebody else. You think about think about Nelson Mandela. I've learned eight years in prison. Why? He came out and when he got set free, now he knew he needed to go help somebody else get free. In a different kind of way. But what he got in that freedom meant he had a lot of time to think and hear what God wanted him to do. How he needed to go and help somebody else. So that drove him. Now listen, when we got free, when we learned some things, because listen, be, to be free, let me tell you, it takes work. It takes commitment. It takes continually confessing the word of God over your life, believing his word, denying yourself, getting in his presence, praying, praying, living a diligent, faithful life. But once you get free, boy, oh boy, let me tell you, your freedom isn't just about you. It's about everybody else around you. Because now that they're not you're free, people, let me tell you this. Here's, here's something I want you to know. Do you know that people who are bound up sometimes don't even know they're bound up? There's people that I speak to on a weekly basis that I do coaching with. Until I tell them, you know, you're bound in this area. Oh, I am? I never saw it that way. That's not the devil will do. He wants you to be blind to your bound upness. He doesn't want you to understand that this is a problem. Because if you don't understand that this is a problem, you're not going to do anything about it. But see, once you get free, living your life free in front of other people, people will desire you. It's like, you know, I, I think about that. Because Zach, when he was a senior in high school, I'll never forget, he, he was standing out, we had an altar call, there was a bunch of youth down there, and he was just standing there and, and just smiling and worshiping God, and he had a big old smile, and, and the preacher, he, he said, hey you, young man, come here, and he calls him up on the platform, and he said, look at this kid, he said, I just look at him, and I'm going to follow him right to the back of the door, and everybody just went crazy, oh yeah, yeah, I'll see. <laughs> People desire to be free, and you will attract other people simply by your freedom. They don't know why, they just know, I want what she has, I want what he has. So your freedom, listen, your freedom isn't just about you. God wants us all to be free. He wants us all to know that he's going to take care of everything that concerns us. He wants us to know that the call that I have on your life, the gifts of calling with God and without repentance. So if I called you to do something, I'm not going to change my mind. He wants you to know that. He wants you to know that you can trust me that I'm going to meet every one of your needs. He, you know, there's things that I pray about and pray about and pray about. And I'm telling you, when you just pray about stuff, it just has a way of working its way out. You ever notice that? It's like you just pray about things and then all of a sudden, it's just like, huh. when you enter into that rest. God just does what he said he was going to do. Now I'm going to show you something. Because this is good. Alright. Acts. Now I want y'all to stay, stay with me. Acts 17.10. So, Paul and Silas, they were, went and uh, they, they were going to go pray. They were minding their own business. And here comes this devilish woman who was a uh, yes. She was like a fortune teller woman, and, and she was angry. Now, now she was a, a slave, but she was a fortune teller, and the slave owners made a lot of money off her. And so now, she's running around telling everybody, well, those little Jesus people, and she and, 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 and Paul and Silas got, got, got irritated because she's running around saying all this stuff. So they go, and they cast the devil out of her. Now, the, their owners, the slave owners, are angry because, well, now you can cast the devil out of her. How are we going to make our money off this lady? So now they're ticked. So they throw them in jail after they beat the stuff out of them. 
Right? And all they're doing is doing the will of the Lord. Now, let me just say something right there. Here, these are two men following God's will, doing His directive, and then they get to snuff that be out of for doing God's will and laying in jail. How many of you had trouble with that guy was doing your will? And look what this man did. This is, I, I'm doing your will and now I got all these problems. I get, I, I get saved, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and then my whole household could put. Does it work like that sometimes? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm going to serve you, Jesus. But let me show you something. He says, many are the trials of the righteous, but he delivers us out of them all. Now, amen. <laughs> yes, indeed, y'all have our clapping. Praise God. Now, let's get to the verse. Acts 17, 10. 10. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, the Berean Jews, now this is how, this is how you're going to be free, okay? So keep this in mind. The Berean Jews were one more, were of more noble character than those of the Thessalonica, right? Now, did you hear that? The Berean, Berean Jews were more noble character than those of Thessalonica. For they received the message with great eagerness. Did you hear that? And examined the scripture every day to see what Paul said was true. Right. And as a result, many of them believed, as did also the number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Now, did you hear what I just said? They, they said the Berean Jews were more noble that means they were more on fire, more committed, more serious, more anointed, more all of that than the Thessalonians. Because they did two things. They were eager for the word and they read it every day. Did you hear that? Yes. They stayed in the word, they read it every day. So those two things together made them more known. So that means if you're not in the Word every day and you're not examining the Scripture to see how it applies to your life, you're probably not as anointed as you should be. You probably are not as free as you could be. So if you want to be free, here is the way. Okay? Now, it says, as a result of that, as a result of their freedom, as a result of their freedom, Many of them believed. So because of their freedom and their commitment to Christ, more people believe because of their commitment. So don't quit. Your commitment to God is making a difference in somebody's life. Amen. Acts 16 through 34. Now, this is what I want to show you too. Let's see. I'm going to skip down because I already told you the story. But if we go to verse 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And this is what I already told you. After they had been severely flogged, and the men were thrown into prison, and the jailers commanded to guard them carefully, when they received the orders, he put them in the inner cell. Now listen to this. When they beat them real good, they put them in the middle cell because they're like, we gotta make sure. They have no windows, no way escape. We're going to get right in the middle so we all keep an eye on these jokes. Right? And they, so they wanted them, they wanted them to, 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 to really know that you're not free and you're never going to be free until we set you free. That's why you put somebody in the middle. Right? So verse 25 says, about midnight, midnight, here's your number two tip to stay free. And midnight, that's, that's, that's what happened with them. They were just minding their own business. Paul and Simon, just praying. They said, okay, in the middle of the night then, even though we're sitting here and got beat up, we, our wounds, our skin is cut open, guess what we're going to do anyway? In the midst of your storm, what you going to do? You're going to praise him anyhow. You're going to praise him anyhow. And Paul and Simon, they began to pray and sing hymns to God. I'm talking about, I'm going to prove to you that their skin was 
their wounds were opened up, and yet they still said, we are going to sing hymns and worship God anyway. That shows faith in God. They begin to sing. And the other prisoners were listening. Verse 26. And now, the other prisoners are listening. Their praise caused God's attention. And then God sent an earthquake. And that foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, the prison doors flew open. And everyone, now listen, you hear this. Everyone's chains broke. Not just Paul and Silas, everyone's chains fell off. Do you see how your freedom matters? Do you see how powerful your freedom is? It's important for you to get free. Because when you get free, those around you get free too. That's the power of the Holy Ghost, right? So you have to see what happened here. When they begin to sing hymns and praise to God, the earthquake came. Listen, God will send the earthquake your way. He'll shake those that don't want to get right. He'll shake those that's causing havoc in your home, in your job. He will cause an earthquake. And all of a sudden, listen, I work with people that I just thought, I was just telling a co-worker on Thursday. She came in and some of our other co-workers were being mean to her. And she says, you know, I don't know why this is bothering me, but this is really bothering me. Right before she getting ready to walk out the door. And I said, you're a Christian. Now, I know that about you, but I haven't noticed her to be a strong Christian. And I said, you're a Christian. So the stuff you've been learning at your church, I said, start activating. I said, start praying. I said, listen, when I was over in that location here that you're working in, I said, whenever I had a problem, I would go into the restroom and put my pad down on the floor and I would get on my knees and say, God, take care of this situation. When you get to the place where you can pray, and trust God, He will work things out for you. Just be faithful at it. Be faithful at it. So, so as a result, now this, this young woman, she comes to me, she tells me all these problems, and I said, just start praying about it. And watch God just fix it. Next thing you know, I saw the Holy Ghost. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. The Holy Ghost just come over her and flood her. And all of a sudden she's standing there and she just well, I said, are you okay? I said, do you pray for you? Totally speechless. I prayed for her, and she said, thank you for the reminder. Because you see, now, now she's getting ready to walk into a new level of freedom. Just because I reminded her, because I'm free, and because I got free, in that same exact situation, now the Holy Spirit's going to teach her how to do it. That's why your freedom is important, because it's going to affect everybody around you. Okay? This is good, y'all. All right, thank you. All right, now, uh, verse 27. Listen to this. The chairman woke up. Now they're asleep. And when he saw the prison doors open, he knew his sword was about, uh, sorry, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. You see that? He was getting ready to kill himself. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. He said, we're here. And the general called for lights, rushed in, and fell, trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now this, this general, he probably wasn't thinking about being saved. He was just working. He was doing exactly what he told. He might have even been angry at them himself. And then all of a sudden, he's like, I don't know what you got, brothers, but I need some of this. If, you're, if that stuff you got on you can knock all these chains off and all of us around here, I don't want some of that kind of power. Do you see how the freedom makes a difference? Do you see this tab? This is good, any girl. <laughs> Listen, your freedom will bring freedom to those around you. And remember I told you earlier, sometimes those people that are bound up around you don't even know they're bound up. You don't know somebody like that. And they don't even realize it because that's how the devil works. That's why it's important for you to be who you are called to be. So you can help somebody else. Now, I'm almost done. Now, verse 31. They replied, 
believe in the Lord Jesus. This is what they told me to do. And you will be saved. And your household. Ooh. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It's not just about you. He made a promise. If you do get it together, I'll take care of the rest of it. It's, just get it together. And he'll do the rest. And then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. What? So now, they didn't just speak the word to the, the general. He said, okay, we're going to talk to everybody now. Now we open the door. Because when you get yourself free and you have another person free, that other person that you just said free, they want everybody to know about this. Come to my house. Tell my family. Let them know about this too. Because this feels good. And he says, verse 32, Then they spake the word of the Lord to him and all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Do you see, even in the midst of all their hurts and their pain, they were still setting other people free. And when they did, he would cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. And their own enemies that inflicted these wounds took them out and said, let me fix what I have messed up in your life. Amen. That's what God will do. He will make those people who did you wrong turn around and bless you if you get free yourself. Now, verse 34, the general brought them into the house and set a meal before them. What? He even cooked for them? Now, you know that's some sure enough, some, some serious recovery. Right? And then he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. So he knew God in a different kind of way now. And he and the whole household. How powerful is your freedom? Your freedom is everything. Last verse. John 8.34 And it says 8.34-36 If it's not, then just go on and study this out. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son, son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And that's what I go in. If he sets you free, you just got to get to know it. And the way you get to know it is by quoting his word and praying and being faithful at it. And he, you will see that your freedom will continue to give you more free every day as you continue on in this journey. Right? It doesn't mean you don't have struggles. It doesn't mean that everything is roses, and peaches, and honey, and all that stuff. It just means that as you continue on the journey, you're going to continue to get freer and freer and freer. And as you do, those areas that God set you free in, you're going to be able to help somebody else get free too. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody give God a hand up. <laughs>